We all know the biblical story about Adam and Eve, the story that tells about the creation of the world and the relationship between God and humanity. But just before Eve was created, there was another woman who appeared in the first chapter of Genesis as an unknown figure. This is Lilith the Demon, an ancient Sumerian and Babylonian mythology figure that emerged in Jewish history far before angels and prophets, possibly even before Yahweh. There is no biblical character that has seen such a development in Jewish mythology from being the first wife of Adam to become the wife of Satan and the mother of demons, at least that's how Lilith was portrayed in the early 2nd millennium AD. Lilith the Night Goddess is one of the most amazing characters in all of biblical history. Who exactly was Lilith, and where did this idea come from? Let's begin. Lilith's origins lie in ancient Sumerian and Babylonian mythology, where she was a member of under-gods or evil demons. Lilith was a threat to pregnant women, babies, and young men. Over time, a linguistic merger took place between the Akkadian Sumerian and Semitic languages, which led to the merging of Lilith in the biblical story. This led to the development of Lilith as a unique mythological figure. Lilith's presence becomes more prominent in later Jewish texts. One of the commentators known in Judaism by the name of Ben Sira introduces Lilith as Adam's first wife. The interpretation suggests that Lilith and Adam, as opposed to Adam and Eve, had sexual disagreements. Lilith sought equality, refused Adam's dominance, and rebelled against him. This rebellion led to her departure from heaven. To understand how the commentator came to these understandings, let's go back to Genesis. In the book of Genesis there are two different descriptions of how woman was created. In one, man and woman are created equally, and in the second, God creates woman from the rib of man. Genesis chapter 1 is written about the equal creation of the man and the woman, being created together and in equal measure in the image of God. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. Genesis 1, verse 27. However, in Genesis chapter 2 there is another version of the creation story that most people are familiar with. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Genesis 2, verse 7 God created Adam out of dust and then placed him in the Garden of Eden after breathing life into him. He tells Adam to enter the garden, but after a while, he realizes that Adam is on his own. He asks Adam to find a suitable companion for him. To do so, he brought him one of every animal in the world to find a companion, but he did not find a match. Therefore, God put Adam to sleep, and while he was unconscious, he used his rib to form Eve. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them, and whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky and all the wild animals. But for Adam no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called, Woman, for she was taken out of man. Genesis 2 Verses 18 to 23. As a result, Lilith appears from ancient traditions to Jewish literature, as the first woman who ran away from Adam, and only then was Eve created. 
And this is how Ben Sira plants Lilith in the Genesis story. When God created the first man alone, he said it was not good for man to be alone, so he created a woman from the earth like him and named her Lilith. They immediately started teasing each other. They argued because Lilith wanted to be in control of sex, but Adam refused because he thought she was inferior. Adam refuses equality, and Lilith refuses inequality, so their story continues and escalates. The commentary continues and states that because of the differences of opinion about their sexuality, Adam's first wife fled. God immediately sent three angels after her, Sinoi, Sansanoi, and Samangeloff, but when they caught her she was already deep in the depths of the sea and chose to be the wife of the king of demons, Ashmedai, and became a blood-sucking. They begged her to return to Adam and she refused. As a punishment, it was decreed that a hundred of her sons would die every day. In revenge for the terrible punishment, she announced that she would persecute human babies, the children of Eve. The story continues and unfolds and at the end of the struggle, as always, the truce agreement between Lilith and the angels is drawn up. Lilith is indeed meant to harm tender babies, but if she sees in the amulet the name or picture of the angels who came to take her, she doesn't harm them. In the meantime, one hundred sons of Lilith's demon will die every day. Therefore, on bowls, amulets, and even in art, the names of the angels are mentioned, Sinoi, Sansanoi, and Samangelov, who promise protection to tender babies from Lilith, the night demon. Her figure is mentioned only once in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah. Desert creatures will meet with hyenas, and wild goats will bleat to each other, there the night creatures will also lie down and find for themselves places of rest. Isaiah 34 verse 14 The simple interpretation is God slews the heavenly army of the other nations, including the gods, spirits, and other divine figures. Lilith is mentioned in this text as a winged figure, nesting in a tree. Tracing the Akkadian origins of Adam's first wife reveals how Judaism was able to take a demonic figure from a neighboring culture, and turn it into an important tool in determining moral boundaries. In the Akkadian culture, Lilithu was a winged night creature and accompanied the goddess Ishtar, the goddess of sexuality and love. The Sumerian called her Kizikalila and she was also called Kalili. The first mention of her appears in the Gilgamesh plots as the one who built her house on the Hulapu tree between the house of the snake in the roots and the house of Enlil's servant, the storm bird. Hulapu was a tree that grew on the bank of the Euphrates River. One day the south wind uprooted his top and roots, and he was swept away by the river. Ishtar the queen of heaven passed by, took the tree, brought it to the temple in the city of Uruk, and planted it in her holy garden. She nurtured the tree with love and wanted to build her a throne from it. Years passed, and the tree grew but Ishtar was unable to cut down the tree because a snake had built its nest in its roots, and Ishtar's spells did not affect him. At the top, this bird built his house and in the middle Lilith built her house. In the end, the hero Gilgamesh cuts down the tree for the goddess with an axe and kills the snake. The storm bird fled to the mountains, and Lilith fled to the wilderness from which she came. The Akkadians believe that she seduces sleeping men, has relations with them, and gives birth to demonic children. Lilith appears as a force that seduces men in most cultures, that were in contact with the ancient Middle East. Early Judaism drew stories, myths, and customs from the pre-monotheistic cultures in the Middle East and Lilith also found its way into Jewish legend. According to another Talmudic legend, God brought all the animals before man so that he could give them names. Adam tried to mate with every female of those animals,
but could not find in any of them the one who would complete him. He prayed to God to create a suitable partner for him. God heard his prayer and created for him Lilith, not from dust but from dirt and dust, and the sister of Tubal Cain, Naamah. Adam mated sex with both of them and as a result, many demons were born to them. The legend also says that many years later, Lilith and Naamah appeared to King Solomon from the familiar story of the child. Lilith wandered from Judaism to the other monotheistic religions. Lilith, who was a relatively unimportant figure in Sumerian and Akkadian mythology, gained a significant role in monotheistic cultures by serving as a symbol for setting boundaries for sexuality. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. You can share with us what you know by leaving a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. Thank you so much and see you next time.